Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the weekend of September 20th. First up, if any of you know or any of you are not aware, I am uh, quite adamant about the fact that the United States is totally gone, I guess totally Hollywood, totally owned by Hollywood. Hollywood owns the politicians, buys them outright in my opinion, as far as copyright law and things like that. So this is kind of a nice blow in the other direction. Unfortunately, it's not the United States, it's the European Union. Court allows libraries to digitize books without right holders permission. Now this is part of the actual law in the EU that libraries have a right to display any of the materials they own in a digital format for private study. And I'll read what the judge had to actually say about this too. Um, as usual, most of the copyright holders want you to buy a copy even for backup. Like if you have your own copy that you own of a DVD, you have an audio, whatever, they would have you believe, although sometimes the law is different, that you can't even make your own backup copies. Well, in this case, I'll just read the court part of the court um, finding here. The court finds that the directive does not prevent member states from granting libraries the right to digitize the books from their collections. If it becomes necessary for the purpose of research or private study to make these works available to individuals by dedicated terminals, the right of the libraries to communicate by dedicated terminals the works they hold in their collections would risk being rendered largely meaningless or indeed ineffective if they did not have an ancillary right to digitize the works in question. So this gives them the right to actually scan and digitize the copies. Um, these copyright maximalists and these companies that hold the rights to this are getting so ridiculous. Uh, they won't e will not even allow audio versions for uh, blind or handicapped people or hard of hearing people, uh, people that are uh, that uh, are blind, um, stuff like that. They will not let. I shouldn't say hard of hearing. It's not hard of hearing. It's people that cannot see. People that are blind need audio copies of certain materials and. They will not do it, but uh, they will not let the libraries do it. They will not let other people do it that are part of a nonprofit organization, but yet they will not provide even another option of it for blind people to be able to, to have works that they can actually listen to in some cases. So um, not only are they really uh, just holding back with uh, not letting people copy stuff, they're not even letting handicapped people, even uh, if they could legally pay for it, even have access to some materials. So I'm hoping this maybe will set a precedent, but I really doubt it that it's going to help any in the United States. Uh, maybe if the EU and other countries actually get a little bit better in their copyright laws, uh, maybe possibly people with certain handicaps to, that need to get certain types of materials could actually order it from overseas. Although I just see that as being another legal fight, trying to get this stuff imported, even though it's, uh, to me, it's totally logical and totally moral to uh, have copies for certain reasons, like research and stuff like that. And hold on a second, I've got to, as usual, what's happening is some of the pages here are turning on videos on me before I can even get to them. I hate when they have auto start on these pages. Um, this next one is from Science World Report, Massachusetts American SpaceX and Boeing to ferry astronauts in space. So we are actually eventually going to be um, back to being a spacefaring thanks to private industry. Private company, I'll just read the first part of the article. Private companies in the United States may just be saving the American space industry. NASA has announced that U.S. astronauts will ta travel to and from the International Space Tra Station on American spacecraft provided by Boeing and SpaceX. Um, good. I would still like to see more money put into NASA itself so that the NASA can be independent and not necessarily need private industry. I would rather they kind of work along as partners rather than relying just on private industry. But... Um, Basically, it's it's a nice start, and I hope it does come about soon. Uh, let's see if it says, uh, this last part says, NASA has long, long relied on Russia in order to send astronauts to the space station. And by encouraging private companies, the space agency is getting around that issue. Um, yeah, it seems like every time we get into a squabble with some nation or something like that and try to pull something on them, they end up pulling the same thing on us, you know, tit for tat. So um, this stuff of... Uh, you know, having to rely on another country or something like that that might not be favorable to us just needs to come to an end, in my opinion. And the next two articles are from International Business Time, and uh, that's the site that was actually starting videos all the time, so it's kind of a pain in the butt in a way to uh, use it, but all you need to do is just use it to read these two articles. But be aware, up in the upper right-hand corner, there's the videos that keep starting up all the time, and it's uh, 
it's a bit of an annoyance. You can keep turning them off, but they will restart again. So the first article is Ultra Strength Scientists Develop Method to Produce Material Twice as Hard as Diamonds. Um, any of my followers on TDD Report, you probably know very well what buckyballs are. Um, they're a form of synthesized fullerene, or fullerite, yes, yeah, synthesized fullerite. And basically the reason why a diamond is as hard as it is is because carbon bonds are very strong. And the way a diamond is laid out, uh, a lot of the, there is a lot more bonds for the carbon. Well, if you want to get the most bonds possible, you would actually have a buckyball so that you would have every place that a carbon could possibly connect with another carbon or as many as possible. You know, it would be pretty close to, you know, maybe 90% or more carbon bonds actually connected one to another. You could have actually have a material that was quite a bit stronger than the diamond. And uh, so that's what they're working on right now. It's about what they said was the requirement of high pressures of almost 100,000 times the normal atmospheric pressure makes fullerite difficult to synthesize on a large scale. However, by adding carbon disulfide to the mix, the team from the Technological Institute for Super Hard and Novel Carbon Materials, and I won't even try to pronounce some of these things, were able to produce fullerite at lower pressures and room temperature. This is because it acts as an accelerator. So you have a catalyst there brought into the mix, kind of like the same thing that happened with aluminum. As soon as a catalyst was brought into the mix, all of a sudden the price and the ease of production of aluminum uh, was a lot, you know, there was a lot more of it available then at a cheaper price. And the last article from the same website, scientists twist radio beams to send data at 32 gigabytes per second, 30 times faster than 4G LTE. This is something that's been needed in a long time. I mean, they demonstrated this just in a small uh, room uh, with about 2.5 meters of free space. But basically, if you're into amateur radio or you know anything about radio communications, polarizing beams to be able to send more signals on the same frequency is not really an uncommon thing. So basically what they did with this was just phase shift the signal and give it a clockwise twist. You could give another signal a counterclockwise twist to provide more data. You could vertical polarize. You can horizontal. You can 45 degree polarize. You can send all these signals on the same frequency together with certain amounts of data until it becomes full and just keep doing it over and over again as long as they're all traveling at that frequency with different polarizations. They don't interfere with each other that much to where you could extract the digital information easily. And I know a lot of people that have smartphones are probably getting sick. And one of the reasons why I haven't gone into a full smartphone contract is I keep hearing the same thing. The first two weeks are great. The next two weeks, even with your unlimited data, they throttle you back because they just don't have the space and the bandwidth. Well, if this can actually do something to actually improve the, the uh, bandwidth, and the researchers led by Alan Wilner, an electrical engineering professor with the University of Southern California School of Engineering, successfully demonstrated data transmission rates of 32 gigabytes per second over 2.5 meters of free space. He also previously did the same thing with light beams, and that would give you an optical bandwidth in the terabytes, 2.56 terabytes per second. So that's interesting articles for you to check out. All the links will be as below as usual. And thank you for watching. I will catch you next week.